Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our discussion on the Time Entry Import System and Design Manager. My name is Brad, and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions pane under Go to Webinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. And lastly, if you miss a portion of the webinar or want to view any of our past discussions, go to our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc., Design Manager INC. And here you can see a complete listing of all sorts of topics, including our quick start videos, short helpful tutorials, and our more comprehensive webinars, which we categorize into our project management courses, accounting courses, and our weekly webinars, such as today's discussion. So in today's webinar, we'll be focusing solely on the time entry import and related topics. As such, we won't be reviewing the employee time system as a whole, as that is discussed at length in our time billing webinar, again, which you can review on our YouTube channel at your leisure. Okay. So <clears throat> the first topic to cover would be the options and settings throughout Design Manager that apply specifically to the time import system. Let's begin with the company level features first. To access your company window, go to File, Company Information and Settings. From here, we're gonna click on the Advanced button, which brings us to our company advanced options, and then we'll go to the Time tab. Now, some of these features default to new projects. Uh, where they're available for customizing at the project level, while others are only available at the company level, thereby affecting all projects. And let's review the ones again that pertain mostly to the time import system. Starting with the create items options, you can choose how to have your time entries configured automatically to either create a new item, to join to an existing item, and further, this can be configured on a per project basis, as we'll see. And here are our options. First, we have new item. This forces each imported time entry to create a new item in the project so that, so that each time entry will be listed explicitly on the invoice to the client. We also have the join to item, which we have selected as our company default. In this case, time entries will only be able to be joined to a time item for a more consolidated invoice as only the single item will be listed for a particular week or month, et cetera. The join to item selection has its own set of options, including the only to latest uninvoiced dated items option. This option forces time entries to only be joined to time items that have been configured for recorded time billing over a particular time frame. Further, that item has not yet been invoiced, so we don't accidentally attach time entries to an invoiced item, and we'll see all of that shortly. There's also the automatically create monthly item. This is a fantastic feature that allows design manager to automatically create a time item within the project for the month of your imported time entries, so you don't need to remember to do so yourself each month. Automates the entire system for you. The final create item option is the user can choose. This option allows the user to decide how to import time entries, either by having the new time item created or joining to an existing time item. Now, new users to Design Manager will find that the join to option is the defaulted selection, along with the options for joining only to dated uh, time items and automatically create monthly item being selected for them. This, of course, can be changed to suit your needs. Another option is the allow import to override design manager rates. This is specific to the time entry import and specifies that the rate of the employee listed in a file or for which you are importing will override any rate for the employees within design manager. This presumes that the rates have been reviewed in the file and are the most trusted and accurate. In other words, if you're listing the rates you have for your employees, on your imported file, as we'll see shortly, use those values over whatever may be recorded in Design Manager, if anything. Lastly, 
we have our, our button to set timesheet template, which we'll return to in just a little while. <clears throat> now, as I've said, some of the settings on the, we just reviewed on the company advanced options window are used to be the default to all new projects, but they can be configured on a per project basis, depending on the needs of your particular clients. So for example, if we go to our project window, Let's take a look at our Hilson Pocono home. Here we go to defaults, and again, advanced markup, and to our time tab, and we can see that the option for the Hilsons is to have new items created for each time entry. So even though our company default was set to join to an existing time item, the Hilsons would prefer to have each time entry listed individually on their invoices and reports so they can review. Okay, now that we quickly reviewed some of the overall company and project configurations, let's turn our attention to the real center of our discussion today, the time entry import window. The time import allows you to import a file containing your recorded time into Design Manager where you can review and correct it and then ultimately post the entries against your projects. Well, we often get asked, what kind of files can be imported? The most commonly used formats would include Excel files, such as your XLS or XLSX files, comma-separated files, or CSV files, as they're known, text files, ending in a .txt, and even iCalendar or ICS files can be imported. What type of programs can produce these files? Well, many. You can use your Excel or Google Sheets to create uh, XLS or XLSX files. And many apps for your smartphone, such as uh, Hours Tracker or Harvest, can produce a number of acceptable file types. One program that is not supported, however, is Apple's Number, as that program creates a proprietary file format that cannot be used by other programs. That being said, uh, most of the, the most convenient way to record your time is to use the Design Manager time template that we've already crafted within the program itself. Let's take a look. So we're going to go to our employee time window. And from here, I can create a time template very easily. What I'll need to do is to input a valid employee code, choose Patrick Wolf, and the desired date range for which I want to create my template. And let's move this to perhaps a week back. And there we go. And once I do, you'll notice that the Get Excel Sheet button is enabled now. Now, this only works when entering time by employee. If I'm entering time by project, notice I don't have the option for the uh, Create Time Template button there. The, the Design Manager Time Template is really intended to be used by a single employee covering one or more projects rather than a single project that has multiple employees working against it. So let's jump back to our employee. We'll select Patrick again. And here is our button enabled for us. So if I click our Create Time Template button, Design Manager alerts me, hey, a timesheet will be created in Excel for Patrick Wolf, the employee, to enter, tower, to enter hours between the dates of 214 and 221, which I've selected. And if I hit OK, there is our email being crafted for me, and you can see there's an attachment of an Excel file right on the email. And I have some standardized text in the message as well. Now, I've already saved the, uh, a copy of that sheet for our review. So let's take a look. And here it is. So let's see what information is listed for us on Design Manager's time template. Well, we have the company name along the top. We can even see the timesheet for Patrick Wolf, so the employee name is listed for us. And I even have the starting date and ranges listed for us as well. Now, this is one way to create a time template. But let's imagine that I have many employees who will all be sending me time. Well, we can do, we can create time templates for all of them quite easily. And here's how we do this. 
go to your address book under lists and glossaries. Here, you want to select only to show employees. So I'm going to remove my clients and vendors that I was reviewing previously and select my employees. I can tag or select the employees to which I want to send a timesheet, and then I clicked the send email button. And from here, I'm asked what type of email do I wish to send, generic or a standard email, but I also have a selection for timesheets. And now I could just enter in the time frame that I desire, and Design Manager will craft multiple emails, all having individual timesheets attached to them. So I can either do them individually from the, uh, the employee time window, or I can do them in bulk from the address book. Now, let's jump back to our timesheet and see some of our other examples here that I feel that really kind of show the skill of our development team. First, if you notice, on the project column, I have a dropdown that has all of my projects listed. The same goes for my activity. I've got all of my activities listed as well. When Design Manager creates the time template, it makes search tabs that automatically populate the project and activity menus for all the active projects and time activities in your design manager. And you can see them under your project lookup and your time activity lookups as well. You can even add or remove a project or activity if you don't want it to be selected for some reason. So if I wanted to get rid of this old activity, I could just delete it. And now back in our timesheet, no longer an option. Of course, over time, I'd want to remove that from Design Manager itself, but you have flexibility right within your timesheet here. So let's add a, a few entries to demonstrate how the time template functions. So I can go ahead and select my brown project. I could put in a date. And let's imagine that I tried to input something out of my date range. Well, Design Manager certainly, I mean, the time template doesn't like that at all. It says the value doesn't match the validation restrictions. Essentially, it's saying, hey, your date is outside of the range you specified for this template, really having a nice checks and balances for you. So I could then change that to 214 instead, and I'm good to go. The start time, I could just enter in my start time and hours and Design Manager would calculate the end time or I could just leave the start time blank and record hours, entirely up to me. So I could put in 10 a.m. hours, let's say I did two hours here. <clears throat> the activity, uh, let's say I do some designing and upon selecting that, the description comes along as well, but I could certainly change that here also. <clears throat> Lastly, we have a, a category for non-billable. If it is billable, just leave that blank. If it's non-billable, just enter or select a Y and you'll indicate not to bill the client, but to still record the time. Let's make a second entry. Now, if I just type B, my brown comes right up for me. I could put in 215. Let's say I start at 9 a.m. And I do 3.75 hours. Let's do designing again. And there we go. And I could add more, of course, but for the sake of our demonstration, I've already done so in a different sheet as an example. And we can see here where I've added several different time entries for a variety of projects. So now we can see how Design Manager's timesheets are extremely efficient in entering and recording your time. Let's see how to actually import that into Design Manager. <clears throat> Okay, so from our employee time window, notice we have an import button along the bottom of that window. Select it and it gets us to our time entry import window. Let's focus on our import time entries selections in the top left corner. And you have an entry for you know, selections for all entries or within a date range. Select all entries if everything on the import file should be imported regardless of the date. The within date range option, let's say I have entries for both February and March, and I only want to import my February 
entries, well, I could use the within date range to narrow down um, the scope of the entries to import to just the February entries themselves. Very important. If you're using an iCalendar or any other calendar file, quite honestly, for importing, um, they're going to bring along all of your appointments since the beginning of time. So you always want to uh, be sure to use the within date range when you're importing a calendar itself. Otherwise, you're going to have all of your time entries since you've been using that calendar, which could be quite voluminous, as you would imagine. So to select our timesheet, we just click the import button. And now we select the file to which we want to import. And there's my timesheet for Patrick. And here we go. That gets us to our import data window. Here is where we're going to associate, or let's say map columns from our source fields of our imported sheet to the available, um, the information available in Design Manager. Note, once we've imported a particular file, Design Manager will remember the association. So using a consistent file format and naming system is important. And it's going to be really helpful to make the process as quick as possible, preventing you from having to uh, reassociate or remap the information. Again, if you use the timesheet template directly from Design Manager, you'll only have to make this association once. So let's go ahead and make our associations. So project is going to go to our project code. Start date would be our entry date, start time, start time. Hours, of course, would be hours. Activity would be activity code. Description to description, non-billable to non-billable. Of course, we try to make our timesheet uh, as logically associated with the fields available in Design Manager as we could possibly do. Uh, import first row or record. If your file uh, does not have column headings as the first row, use this option. Otherwise, Design Manager will automatically skip the first row. Now, if we click OK, we can see all of our imported time entries for review. It's very important at this point to understand that these entries are not yet recorded into their respective pro projects. You won't see them in specifications, on your new invoice window, etc. We're still reviewing the entries at this point. And to that end, we can see totals are conveniently listed for us along the top. We can see uh, totals for billable hours, billable amount, and we would even see our non-billable hours and total hours that we're importing. Entries are going to come up um, sorted in ascending date order, or you can see uh, the earliest dates going to the latest dates. Uh, but like most grids in Design Manager, you can just click the column heading and uh, sort by project or activity or what have you. Another of the benefits of using Design Manager's time template is that you're nearly guaranteed that all of the information will import without the need of making a lot of manual adjustments, of course. Our time template is configured to be imported as simply as possible. I'll do another example shortly that I'm going to use a different file format to highlight some of the features that are needed to adjust imported entries if there are any discrepancies noticed. Now, I selected these three projects, the Carter's Pennington home, the Hilson Pocono home, and the Brown Newtown home specifically, as they're each configured differently for recording time. The Pilsen Pocono home, as we saw, is set to make um, items, uh, new items for each time entry imported. The Carter's Pennington home, that's set to join the time entries to a monthly time item that's automatically created. And lastly, the Brown's Newtown home also uses the join to item method, but it requires that a time item is manually created and then selected as the automatically create monthly time item selection is not uh, has not been selected back on the default window for that project. And you can see, to illustrate, if we jump over to our projects for the brown under specification, I've manually created items to join into my time entries, one for January, one for February, uh, et cetera. 
while the Carter's Pennington home will do that feature for me automatically. Okay, now, so let's take a look at what we have here. The Hilsons, let's look at those first. Now, these entries are all set. They're configured to make a, a new item upon importing, and all the information is being properly displayed, and design, ha design manager has already set them with the checkbox, indicating that that's ready for importing. Same with the Browns. If we take a look here, design manager already found an appropriate item for me. Well, how did it do that? Let's jump back to that project real quick. Notice I have these, my two time entry items that I created. If I take a look at my February design services, I've created a time budget item and I've recorded a range for that item. Same with my January. So design manager upon importing goes out, reviews the fact that these two particular entries are dated within February, of course, and is intuitive enough to go out and select those particular, uh, that particular item for the project. So it's doing all of that analysis for us. And lastly, the Carters, very simple as well. Design Manager is indicating that's automatically going to create a new monthly item for me. So it will create that February 2019 um, time item for us, which is exactly what we're looking for on that project. Now, all of the items are set and ready for importing, again, as indicated by the green checkbox in the import column. But let's explore a few additional features and benefits before recording them into the respective projects. First, we can edit any of the entries that are appearing on our list. I could come in, and notice, I could change the description, I could change my activity, etc. So I might want to uh, change my description to include a particular location or something along those lines. I can make any changes or edits as I need from here <clears throat> as well. Now. I could also add entries from here. Along the bottom, I have my add option as well. So I could simply create an entry here. Perhaps I forgot to record it onto my uh, timesheet that I imported, uh, or I filed an, uh, a particular time entry to not come over for what reason. I could add one manually here as well. Very simply, I would just put in Patrick Wolf project. Let's go ahead and add that to the Hilsons. Activity, we'll select some merchandise, entry date, about the 11th. I could even do my time. Let's say I did it from 11.15. When I enter in my time, Selection Design Manager calculates the hours for me. And since the Hilson project, as we saw, is set to create new items for each of my time entries, my only selection on my item dropdown is new. Now, conversely, the Brown project would show all of the time entries that are available to join to, uh, and the Carters would have another option where they could create a new monthly item as well. So that item selection will follow the, um, the settings of each of the project, providing you with the appropriate selections on that dropdown. Go ahead and click OK, and just like that, I've manually added an item from here as well. I could delete any items if I wanted to permanently remove a time entry from the import grid. Perhaps it was added twice, or I determined something uh, shouldn't be billed or is being recorded improperly, et cetera. Now, the combination of the file import, uh, how we saw how we could add and edit uh, and delete items, uh, entries from here, really makes the time import window almost like a workspace to manage all of your entries for services prior to committing them to the projects. And as such, there are really a few creative and useful functions to this window. You can import all of your entries on a regular basis, weekly, daily, et cetera, and allow them to accumulate in your import window. When you're ready to bill for your services, you can select the desired entries, put others on hold, 
for future billing if desired. And essentially, you can consistently have all your time recorded so you don't lose track of any valuable billable time while simultaneously preparing billing for other clients. So you're consistently importing all of your time, billing as necessary. In a larger firm, an office manager or a controller, they can distribute and then receive all of the completed uh, time templates for the necessary employees. Uh, then they can import each one. Uh, for a company-wide review of the time for a particular period and easily make any corrections prior to committing the time entries for projects so they can be billed. Another uh, handy scenario, let's say a design assistant or a junior designer, they can import or record all of their time and then allow a senior designer or principal to review in case the entries need to be altered for billing, et cetera. And you don't even need to have them log into your design manager account quite honestly, to do so. You can just export this list right from Design Manager and give it to the owner or principal. How do I do that? Well, just right click the grid, click the export button, and then I can see where I wanna have my file stored. And I've done so already, and here's how it would appear. So I could shoot this off right over to a senior, uh, a senior designer, principal, controller, et cetera, and they can review make any corrections back to me or send any corrections back to me and then I can make the appropriate adjustments on the time import window itself. Now, that's all well and good. I've got my entries all selected for me. They all appear correct, so I'm, they're ready to import. How do I get them over to my projects? In other words, how do I truly record them into the respective projects? Well, all you have to do is click the record to projects button. Design manager is always going to alert you. Hey, are you sure you wanted to record all the entries that are set as import to their respective pro uh, projects? Because there is no way to uh, reverse this procedure. So if we click yes, design manager is going to go out there, take all the entries, entries that we imported, and now craft them into the projects themselves. And it'll tell me exactly how many entries were imported. So. How do they appear now? Well, let's jump back on our specifications. And if we look at our brown new town home, let's take a look at our February design services. And there they are. We can see our two entries uh, listed for us. Over on the Hilson project, we've now created our entries as brand new items. Again, exactly how the Hilsons have their project crafted for us. Just like that, we very easily record our time onto our timesheet. I can then very quickly import it into the time import window, make any adjustments, edits, corrections that I need. And just like that, by recording to the projects, I've crafted all of those items ready for billing. Let's talk about that timesheet for a quick moment. You can even create or edit your own template. Maybe you want to rearrange the columns. Maybe you want to change the aesthetic of the uh, overall appearance of the timesheet, whatever. You can then save that file as the new timesheet. In other words, you can create your own default timesheet in Design Manager. How do you do that? Well, we already saw. Back on our company information and settings, back on our advanced and to our time tab, we have the set timesheet template button. When we click that, it gets us to our set template timesheet window where one, I could save the default template to an area on my computer or my network where I can then edit it in Excel or whatever file I so, program I so desire, make the changes that I want, and then I can load that adjusted template right in to design manager. So now we're overriding design manager's template with the one you've crafted yourself to again hone itself to your business needs. If for whatever reason you have any issues uh, with your version or you want to go back to our uh, original format, you can just click the use default template and we'll overwrite your old one and use our original. So we even give you the further ability to craft that timesheet again for exactly the information you want recorded in the manner you want recorded and the aesthetic as well.
Okay, well, that's Design Manager's time template. But what if you wanted to use another application uh, to record your time? As I said before, Design Manager can import a number of different file formats. I've created an export file in the CSV or comma separated value format from an application called Hours Tracker. And we can use that as an example. So here, within my Excel, I have my Hours Tracker for Ashley Brand created in a CSV format. And much different information, but similar. We have the job column, which is apparently the name of the project, clocked in, clocked out, which calculates a uh, duration. Here we see the hourly rate, which is Ashley's um, rate, and then the earnings would be um, the total amount charged to the client. Here, the hours tracker gives us columns for comments and tags. Well, we can use these fields to, um, to make our import into Design Manager more accurate, resulting in less manual adjustments. So in the comment, we've put in activity codes, and the tag is Ashley's employee code. So whatever uh, application you want to use, use the fields that are in there and hone them so to best work with Design Manager's import. Let's see how this comes in. So now we're going to import again. We're going to select Ashley's hours tracker. And again, since I haven't done this yet, I need to use my import data window to map or associate the columns. So the job is the project name, not the code, but the name. Clocked in could be start date and time, clocked out, end date and time, duration would be hours, hourly rate would be rate per hour, whoops, hourly rate, yeah, rate per hour, earnings, whoops. Hourly rate is cost per hour, earnings rate per hour. Comment, as we said, was our activity code, and tags was our employee code. We can leave the rest of the columns blank. There's no association with them in Design Manager. Click OK, and we can see now, unlike Design Manager's time import, a design manager's time template when importing the hours CSV, the hours tracker CSV, certain information did not translate properly. And design manager's time entry import is catching that for us automatically, finding any entry that has errors and putting them in, into our fix mode and showing which areas are causing the problems activity, project, etc. Let's take a look at what happened here. So for the Carter's Pennington home, the code in the hours tracker import was admin. Well, we don't have a time activity for admin, so there's no way to correspond that value. The Hilson's Pocono home, well, the name of that project in the hours tracker file is Pocono home, not Hilson Pocono home. So it couldn't match up that that file name, that project name, to an existing design manager project, which leads to a very important point. If you're using a file outside of design manager's time template, be sure to attempt to make the information recorded in your app match the design manager information as much as possible. It'll really streamline the import process, resulting in a lot less uh, entries that have to be fixed or uh, reviewed. I only have two entries for the Hilsons, um, and I can manually fix them, but if I had dozens manually adjusting each one, it could be really tedious. So we also have our fix entries feature here, which allows us to change um, information quite rapidly. So I could, let's put the Carter's options on hold, and you'll see why momentarily. And then in my fixed entries, I need to change the project. So I'm going to select the update the project for fixed entries. And this will be our Hilson Pocono home. When I click update, 
that I'm in, of course, is going to warn me. Hit yes, and two records have been updated. And just like that, now I have the appropriate association to my Hilson Pocono home. Design Manager has taken it out of the fix a designation and put it ready for import. I put the carters on hold because they would have been adjusted as well. Now we can review them. So for the carters, I need to get a code for this missing admin. So what I'll do here is I'll set these guys to fix. And in this case, I'll update the activity. And let's simply put that as design. Hit the update button. And now I've associated the proper activity as well. We can also remove entries. So I could remove any entries on hold. If I've designated them on hold for a particular reason and simply want to remove them from my import, I could do so. Any entries that are set for fix, um, I, I've manually, uh, manually adjusted all the ones I want. I want to get rid of any ones remaining and remove all entries. This would clear the entire list of entries. Maybe I want to go back to our app and make adjustments that are going to allow the entries to import uh, more cleanly so I could remove them all the entries and import again. And with that, that takes us to the end of our discussion of the design manager's time entry import. Uh, we reviewed all the available settings at the company and project level that really customize how you want to import, also in conjunction with some of the uh, standard time um, features as well. Then we reviewed using the employee time and the time entry import windows to create time templates, customize time templates, import time entries from a file, et cetera. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for joining the discussion today and hope you attend another of our free webinars in the near future. Take care and have a great day.